one o'clock, I am calling this meeting to order. Please stand for the pledge. Heather, would you lead us? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, thank you everyone for attending. Um, we have some pretty, uh, pretty cool presentations going on. Um, thank you, Mr. Kelly, for bringing your entourage here and Chow. It was really nice to have you share these different programs and we will talk a little bit more about it later on. I just wanted to give a couple quick updates. We have one more week left of the legislative session and things are really going quickly. Um, and I mean, quickly, like by the hour, you have to, you know, check and see where the bills are at. A couple of them I wanted to tell you about. Um, both of the charter school bills have passed and are getting ready for the governor to sign, um, which will be interesting to see how those work. Um, House Bill 332, which is the, the trust that has been established, that will be established, or would be established if it passes, um, for school health insurance, for a pool um, of, of school districts that could get you know, fairly affordable health insurance. That has one more hoop to jump through, and I think it's going to be tomorrow, maybe Thursday. Um, the other one that's pretty exciting um, is House Bill 257, which is the one about the career and tech ed, and that is our own Courtney Sprunger who has introduced that and promoted it. That will be some additional funding for the career and tech ed program. So that is really exciting um, about that. Um, I also wanted to remind people that um, May 10th, there is a retiree party um, at the VSW, 4 to 6. Um, so please, let's go and honor our retirees. Um, you probably all noticed that we had our op-ed piece in both the Beacon and in the Daily Interlake. So um, it was nice to see that and to see them come out um, you know, endorsing our levies. Um, first thing on our agenda is the approval of the minutes. So I finally figured out how to get to the minutes. I hope the rest of you did. <laughs> so are there any questions? We have two sets of minutes to approve. So let's do April 11th. First, any corrections or changes, Will? I'll just make the motion that we approve the minutes. Thank you, Will. 11. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Will and Jack. It's been moved and seconded that we approve the minutes. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passed aye. unanimously. Aye. Oh. Thank you, Rebecca. <laughs> I will remember you next time. <laughs> uh, next, approving the minutes for April 18th. Hope everybody got a chance to read those. <clears throat> Any questions or comments? Somebody want to make a motion? Well made. That's Thank you, Jack. Is there a second? Second. <laughs> they beat you this time, Lloyd. <laughs> okay, it's been moved and seconded that we approve the April 18th meeting. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Rebecca, how do you vote? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Motion passed unanimously. First up on the agenda, work study top bet. Pete? Yep, thanks, Sue. Um, 
just hey, first of all, just want to thank um, Chow and Mike, and just for putting all of this together. And one thing that we talked about was you know trying to get the students here, and just to be able to showcase a little bit of what they do and what they're doing out there in the community. And you can tell just from the presentations they do they do a great job. Um, so we had uh, Braley Cheeks from Glacier High School, and Jennifer Merriman uh, is their sponsor, and she was from the Garvey Law. And then Sabrina McDowell from uh, Glacier High School, and then Maddie Bondi. So Lloyd's daughter was here, so great to have them. So from uh, Glacier High School, and, and they uh, worked with Marty Pod. Marty's back in in the back there at, at Edgerton, and then uh, Sabrina also worked at uh, Russell School. And then we had a couple other um, presentations, but unfortunately the kids uh, weren't able to be here. But uh, Mike was able to set that up, and then Chow was on our community. Um, connections, but uh, one thing that Mike brought back, uh, he went and visited a center for, for career discovery, and as you guys know, that's one thing that we really have, have been working towards with our work-based learning. I uh, brought one thing back, and, and something really resonated with me, and it was, it was a quote within a, a packet that he gave me. It said, work-based learning, and it's the national initiative for redefining ready, indi indicate, uh, includes indicators that have been developed from research by world-class organizations and that more accurately reflect the educational landscape of the 21st century. Multiple metrics include advanced courses, Algebra 2, early college credits, industry-recognized credentials, community service, community engagement, among others. Uh, students learn in a variety of ways. They should be able to demonstrate readiness in a variety of ways. And, and you can see, you know, as we work on our work-based learning, as we work on our personalized competency-based education. I think these really meld well together. Um, so I'd like to recognize both Chow and Mike, and then if you guys have any, and Marty's still back there too. Yep, Marty's in, in the back. So if you guys have any questions just on the presentations or about any of the students, so they'd be happy to, to answer. Um, if we have any questions, um, if we have any opportunities for internships that didn't get filled, or did all the positions get filled this year? No. Um, for all the requests that I've got, not every one of them got filled. This year is a little bit more difficult in that arena because it wasn't part of the registration process last year. So we, when we found uh, internship sites, uh, employers and professionals in the Valley that wanted to host a student intern, then we had to develop the student base piece of it and figure out if their schedules would be. Next year, because of the um, administration of the two high schools. It's part of the registration process, so that gives me time to work with the school counselors, build it into their schedule, and then go develop the sites out in the community. Um, but to be quite honest, I, I, I don't think that I could, we have over 100 students registered for next year, and I don't, I don't know that I could get 100 students in internship for that second go around, but the first go around is a. So, so this next year we may have more student interest. Uh, or yeah. the other way around. Okay. Yeah. And for example, like you, you, you could have somebody, students who are interested uh, in doing a law internship. Mm -hmm. um, so we have McGarvey Law firm on board, um, working with other law firms right now to get them on board, but if you had like five students who wanted it and I only have two sites to develop, that's part of the problem. Um, but that doesn't stop me, you know, um, I just keep going out and trying to develop more and more and more. And a question that I got this evening too is about when you're cultivating these sites, do, the, do you expect it to be one time only or do they return? And I, my approach is we, we want to develop a library of internship sites. Doesn't mean that there will be a match every semester for that particular site, um, but, but potentially it could be. So ask for them to be on board as long as they possibly can. Um, I think that's all the questions. Any other questions? Have one more. <laughs> Go ahead. Or... Um, what's the most popular intern? Like, what does it seem like the most students are interested in? Welding, law, 
veterinary science and uh, medicine. Medicine we're really developing. That's kind of a, a more difficult one to get going, but we, we have an agreement, an affiliation agreement in place with Logan Health. Start working in that arena fall semester of 2324. But, but also, you can looking at other clinics and whatnot to utilize those places. Thank you. Any so I had one questions? sort of similar. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Me? Okay. Um, yes. It is about that equity piece. So a student, you have a list of pe people willing to take interns and you make these available to students and a student can also bring their own internship, right? If they wanted to do something, they have somebody they want to work with, they can come to you and ask about that. Is that correct? Did you hear that, Rebecca? No. Did you hear that? He said yes. <laughs> oh. And um, on the middle elementary school side, how equitable, does every school have the same opportunities? Does each school have its own opportunities? How does that work? Is it, you know, if you happen to be in this class, do you get this opportunity? Or if you're interested in something, can you ask for it? Mike, could you use Heather's microphone there to answer that, please. It was the middle yeah, school so elementary. That, 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 that. that was the middle school oh. elementary. Sorry. For the middle school side? Yeah. So all of our extended classrooms are driven by teacher um, interest. And so if a teacher has a particular organization that they want to partner with, we welcome that conversation to have that organization work with us. And so I don't create any of these experiences. The teachers take the initiative to create these opportunities because they're the ones that are ultimately implementing this instruction. So if a student, Thanks. like in, there's, I don't know, three English teachers at KMS. So if one English teacher from eighth grade goes into a writing seminar, the other two, classes would not have that opportunity or could they add on if they were particularly interested in writing or anything? Like I said, each teacher drives what experience is for um, for their particular class. And so there are a variety of experiences that students have. And it's not, you know, just like you have different teacher personalities, you're going to have a different experience um, based on who you have. But that doesn't mean that our students are excluded from particular experiences just because a teacher decides not to engage in that specific engage, it's that specific um, extended classroom. So I'm not sure how that last statement works. So if like a student had a particular interest in theater and there's a teacher who tended to take kids to plays, they could ask to be in that classroom or how, how would that, I'm not sure I understand. So specific to the middle school, all of our teachers work in teams. And so it's ultimately up to that team to decide how they want to engage with extended classrooms. And so while we don't have the exact same experience for every teacher, we do try to provide like experiences across the board. Just, just because we have people online and stuff, if we could use a microphone, if we're going to respond. Hi, Rebecca. This is Sarah Cole. I Because Matt Jensen is not here, and I actually asked this very question because I'm super interested in um, kids having equal access or equitable access to experiences. I think the first year, um, we're really just trying to get teachers excited about it. So there's a lot of voice and choice and opportunities. Our hope is to be able to expand these to all classrooms so that there's extensions for all students. Um, but in the first year, it's really just like getting like, putting our toe in the water, giving teachers some voice and choice, and then extending those opportunities. Another example is, let's say Marissa at Rankin has a fifth grade teacher who's interested in extension. The other fifth grade teachers and students often get afforded the same opportunity and hop on board. So um, does that help? 
Yeah, thank you. I was just wondering about the equity piece. I was just making sure that if there was, you know, the, yeah, it's not certain students get special things and other students may get different special things, but maybe not the ones that they are particularly, you know, yeah, I just wanted to check on that. And now I know. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Joe. I have a question. Jennifer? Um, so the, the presenters this evening were like Flathead and Glacier students. Does the LEC have the same opportunity? Do those students have the same opportunity? They sure do. And we have uh, three interns this semester at L from LEC. <laughs> Any other questions? Thank you, Chow. Thank you, Mike. And thank you to all the students that you brought with you. Wonderful. Yeah, thank you guys. I know you guys put a lot of work into that, so did your students and you know, those portfolios. So, Joe, thanks. Okay, hey, next up on the agenda is our building update. Um, time for Rankin Elementary, Marissa Murray. Welcome. Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, it's good to see everybody tonight. So those of you who don't know me, I'm Marissa Murray and I am the principal at Rankin Elementary, and I thought it was important to recognize this is year five that we've been open. People say, really, that long? Yeah, year five. So um, it's been really exciting over the last five years to change and grow with our new building as we've opened and learned what's working, what's not working, <laughs> and make changes along the way and learn and grow together, not just as students, but as staff as well. Um, we have been taking on the transformational journey in multiple different ways. Um, some of the messages that I have incorporated this year with my staff and then staff with students and families is leaning into something uncomfortable. We've talked, to that, talked about that a lot um, in our staff meetings, in my weekly messages, and in our morning meetings with kids that we only grow, most of the time we only grow for uncomfortable. And so getting into being gritty and being uncomfortable and learning new things, that it's okay to make mistakes. And we learn and grow from those things. Um, one of our other big goals as a school this year was to connect and engage, um, which has been great to have Chow um, on board to help do that. I feel like that has really taken us a lot farther than I had anticipated um, because I see teachers reaching out, not just from what Chow sends us as experiences, but teachers reaching out to all other um, people in the community and being creative with different ideas of bringing people in. And um, the opportunities that we've had to work with the high school this year have been amazing. Um, and our kids have had those um, awesome experiences. We've gone to some plays at both high schools. We've had the physics day at Glacier High School. Um, We've had some other um, students from Flathead, the speech and debate that came over and did activities with their kids. We have all kinds of, we have a music intern that's coming over um, and working with our music teacher. And Mike, Mike can tell you I was a little bit leery of it at first because I have a first year music teacher and I'm like, are you sure? <laughs> but it has been a great experience. This student just recently was able to partner with my music teacher and produce a whole fourth grade production last night from beginning to end and be part of that process and help um, put it on last night. So it was exciting to see how excited they got about the final production. So that's been great. And also um, striving hard to learn something every day and then making and forgiving ourselves along the way. Being transparent and of course we like to have a lot of fun. At the very end I have a lot of pictures and it's just to celebrate all the fun things we do too. Um, I just want to celebrate some of the things that we've done this year or that we continue to do that I'm proud of or that we are proud of. Um, our PLC process is something we really have um, strengthened and worked hard um, to work together as a team and building strong teams, working together as a team, and really creating that collaborative culture. And so it's very exciting 
to know that I can walk away from it and leave it with my teachers and I trust that um, they're really digging deep in that process and looking at data and looking at instruction and talking about the four questions or the question four questions um, and then being transparent with families, being transparent with kids, and kids being then transparent and knowing where they're at in their educational journey. And isn't that the cutest EK little girl you've ever seen? I had to put it in there because she's so adorable. <laughs> um, just a reminder of what PLC, our PLC process, that it's working together to um, help our students grow and learn, but also for teachers to grow and learn as well. Um, we teach, we collaborate, we exchange ideas and information, and we learn from each other. Our teachers meet um, weekly for 15 minutes in their grade level teams. Um, this year, we've also extended it beyond that um, with our early release times. We've done some vertical work with um, like our K1 teams, two, three, four, five. We have also been working with our sister schools or partner schools, I guess we're referring to it. I said I can't refer to it as a sister school because my partner school is Brent, who is my brother. So I'm like, no, it's partner school. Let's not say sister schools. I don't really want to be in charge of them. Um, so we <laughs> or take, take accountability for him. Don't tell him I said that. <laughs> But we've been working together in that process as well, um, creating opportunities on some early releases to get together and talk about, um, we're already working on next year's um, early release times and what that's going to look like with some of our, um, our professional development. And so we're actually meeting on May 3rd, next week, May 3rd, to get together um, to talk about some of our goals for next for next year as K1, 2, 3, 4, 5 teams with our staff together. So that's been a great partnership. And then our, also our wheel and professional development training that we put on district-wide. So we're really immersing ourselves in that PLC process um, with all of those avenues. Again here, this is just what we do. We monitor instruction, we plan instruction, we work with kids to see where they're needing support and then we get kids what they need. Um, some of the other connections that we've made, and Heather's been a part of one of our meetings this year, so it's been exciting. I have a new parent in my building who happens to be a new pastor at Veneration Church and wanted to know how they could help, and so it's been pretty exciting. We've been working on a few things. Um, so we have some teacher appreciation stuff coming up, but they've been providing positive notes of affirmation for our staff, which has been great. Um, we're working on greeters for breakfast and lunch, so standing at the door and just loving on kids, have a good day, how was your day, what are you looking forward to today, um, so we're working on that. Um, we're working on a list currently of some people, sometimes um, we have classes or kids who don't have anybody available to go on a field trip, and you know they always want that special person, and so uh, kind of a bank of people that will help come on a field trip if a teacher needs more assistance and we don't have enough volunteers. Um, we're talking about some possible service projects with them and then we're also working on um, a lunch buddy program next year. My instructional coach has just talked to another gal at the church about a summer reading program with some of their church members and so we're just really excited about that partnership and we're just getting it going but it's been very positive. Another exciting thing we've done this year, we have our big neon dance, which was like world record attending this year. I think I think there was almost 650 people. I had to move it from the commons to the gym. And I did get a little frightened in the middle of it because fire trucks showed up outside. And I went outside like, oh no, what's happening? But they were they were just getting some water for the fire down the road. <laughs> but it was very successful and everybody had a great time. Um, we have our leadership team has been doing some things this year. We have spirit days. I'm sure you see pictures posted on Facebook. We had um, a pretty cool send off this year out in the parking lot like we typically do. But this year the girls got out of the bus from Flathead and there were so many teachers that they had had previously at their other elementary schools that they all got out and they were just giving hugs down the row. It was it was really, really cool to see how excited everybody was for each other. Um, we did an after school program called Crazy Eight Math Club this year. And it was 
so popular the first round that I had another teacher join on with Mrs. Thomas to be a part participant or a teacher leader in that. So we were able to have four sections of um, 16 kids at a time. So it was, it, that was pretty cool to see the interest in that um, all on their own time. Um, we're currently next week, or no, Thursday, um, we are doing a planting project with the VOAG. The VOAG students made some planter boxes and they're bringing them to Rankin and they're, they're, their students are going to work with our student, our first grade team and the kids to do some planting of flowers and then we're going to do sunflowers in the fall. So that's been a pretty exciting um, project to be a part of. So anybody who wants to come Thursday morning at 9 o'clock, you may come. Um, speech and debate team has come over for different holiday craft things and helped with the kids. Um, we have GHS coming to do a French immersion in fourth grade, and that is very exciting. Um, the kids are loving it so much that I have a um, substitute teacher who was subbing in a class one day, and she speaks French, and so she asked if she could come start participating with the students, too. I said, sure. <laughs> um, we have some Spanish and music internships happening. Um, we have... Some unique things that have happened this year are aspire, with our Aspire program. Our, our music teacher has done a special music class for just the Aspire kiddos. And then our PE teacher, Mrs. Elliott, has done a special um, PE class with those Aspire kiddos, those kiddos who don't necessarily join a large group or like the loud gym or noisy, they're doing a special class for just those kiddos. So that's been pretty exciting to see. We worked with the snack program to have a bingo fundraiser. Um, Greater Valley Dental program worked with our first graders and came in, and then our partner school collaboration. So lots of exciting fun things happening, and these are just some celebrations. As you can see, we like to dress up, especially our first grade team. <laughs> and then there's a picture of our, in the middle there of our wheel collaboration time with one of the sections happening in our library. All of our wheel once a month um, where all the elementary schools get together at Rankin and they get to pick a topic or an area that they would like to work on and they come to that class and everybody comes to Rankin. So that's nice that they can collaborate and work together once a month to get out of time. Again, special music class. I was actually short of sub one day and it was one of the final days at the high school and so um, I had my son and two of his, I didn't have sub so I had my son and his two friends come from Glacier because they didn't have to take finals to come help me in music class because I was the music teacher. <laughs> so that's actually my son in the middle there. So I was really thankful they were able to not take their finals and come help me. <laughs> Neon dance pictures and then the physics. I think Diane probably recognized yeah. this young man at the top. <laughs> so that was, I have some kids that said it was the best day of the school year getting to go to Fisher High School. So that was, that was cool here. And our snack fundraiser and then the send off. And this is the, the final um, culmination of our Crazy Eight math group night, and it was called Toilet Paper Olympics. Yes, there was math involved. <laughs> so yeah, we do lots of fun things, and I invite any of you to come anytime you'd like to come hang out with us. Marissa, I do have a question for you. When you were talking about um, your systems of support uh, and the data that you're collecting, I think we talked about like last year you were doing the baseline data. Are you seeing any trends? in that right now? I mean, like, hopefully reduced interventions? And, or. Our mid-year data this year, in especially our primary grades, we changed some things in the interventions we were doing. We're doing more um, push-in instead of pull-out, K2. And so that changed a little bit for us. I feel like we have more progress um, than we did the last couple of years. So I don't know if that's the only reason. If it changes teachers, it could be multiple things. Um, but we are going to continue that model in our K2, especially. And we've actually just already started designing our schedule to implement that in third, fourth, and fifth. Um, our K1 data is 
so much better that we're trying to figure out how to be, what are we going to do over the summer to, you know, those bubble kids that get up to green, how are we going to keep them going so they don't slide? So that's why we're currently looking at what type of summer reading program or something can we do to keep them reading. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? Will. Can you speak a little bit more about the Greater Valley Dental Program from first grade? Sure. Um, the Greater Valley Dental reached out to us. Um, they received a grant um, through, through Greater Valley, and it was for first graders. So they were able to provide a $25 stipend for each of my teachers <laughs> to be able to um, participate. And so they came in for, I think it was eight weeks, and they came in once a week and talked about oral health, dental health, appropriate brushing, flossing, why you take care of your mouth, all of those things. And they had two or three staff members from Greater Valley that would come and do the lessons with the kiddos. And so basically the teacher's job was to kind of organize it. Um, they came and did all the lessons and you know provided you know healthy nutritious snacks and just basically lessons that they came in and did in our classroom. Yeah. yeah. Anything else? I have one. Thank you, Marissa. Oh, yeah, Rebecca, go ahead. Um, so when we bring in church volunteers, are we um, being careful of special training about the laws regarding proselytizing and handing out religious literature or the school rules about handing out literature period and all that sort of thing? Um, yes, we, everybody that comes in, we're still doing the background checks for any volunteers that do come in and um, typically I do, if it's a bigger group like the church group, we've had um, conversations about rules, what we can do, what we can't do, and what we can provide and not provide. So bigger groups like that, yes, most of our volunteers are coming in for field trips. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Marissa. <clears throat> Next up on the agenda is public comment. At this time, the board will allow 15 minutes for comments on public matters that are not on the main agenda. Members of the audience are encouraged to briefly address the trustees on an issue that is not on the agenda. The chair of the board will seek comments from the audience on significant items as they occur. Public matters do not include any pending legal matters, private personnel issues, or private student issues. Please do not attempt to address such issues at this time or you will be ruled out of order. Please note that individuals will be given three minutes for public comment. Is there any public comment? Uh, I'm Sean Pandita. I live in Kalispell, and I drove this down here. <laughs> As you are all aware, I'm running for trustee in this district. I received my ballot on April 20th. I voted on April 24th at 10.43 a.m. I have a photo here of me voting. Um, Denise, the election administrator for School District 5, was present at the ballot box when I voted. I asked her a few questions about how ballots were being handled and if they were being brought down to the county each day. She informed me the first couple of days were slow, so they locked the ballot box up overnight at the transportation office. However, they were going to start bringing them to the elections department as more ballots come and their box gets full. I dropped my ballot in the box that day, April 24th at 1043 a.m. As of the end of the day today, which is the 25th, um, the county has not checked in or accepted my ballot. I'm not sure why. Maybe it's still the transportation office. Other concerning issues I have with the transportation office. The reason for moving the election to this office was for ADA compliance. I did not see the ADA voting machine present at the location when I was there on April 24th. Why is the ADA voting machine not available to voters, if that was the main concern? The front of the building says transportation shop, as well as the address 514 East Washington. It does not say anything on the building indicating this is where people vote. I took a photo of that. 
Only one of the two double doors was unlocked, so one was locked. And in the window of one of the doors, it states on a sign, no unauthorized admittance. This entrance is for print shop and IT department only. Why is the building not clearly marked? And why is this sign allowed to stay on the door if this is where people are voting? Finally, I have had a problem with the things I say up here not getting properly recorded. In fact, this is causing issues in the current election. So I have typed my complete statement. Please enter this along with the photos I have provided for the record. I still believe it is wrong that the district will not allow members of the public to make sure statements they've made are recorded properly in the minutes before they're approved. In the past, minutes were visible to the public prior to approval. In my opinion, this recent change is not good for transparency of this school board. Thank you, Sean. Is there any other public comment? Seeing none, we will move on to the next item on the agenda, human resources. We have personnel action items. Uh, Mike, are, yep. are you doing this one? Yep. Good evening, trustees. Before you tonight is our routine list of uh, personal action items for hires, resignations, terminations, uh, both certified, classified, and one administrative position. And looking for approval. Great. Thank you, Jeff. Second. Thank you, Scott. Moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Is there any public comment? I noticed that uh, Nick Loma is on this uh, as a resignation, um, which I think is probably good because he really wasn't all that friendly. Sean, this is a about personnel about item. You, we can't talk about this during public comment. Sorry. Thank you. Happy to talk to you later. About a specific. You can talk about a specific person during right. public comment. Right. Anything else? Any other comments? Been moved and seconded. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any aye. opposed? Motion passed. Ten aye, one opposed. No. no. Rebecca, was that an aye for a, oh. a yay or a nay? Sorry, that was an I. I just said it during the ne negative thing because of a lag in the computer. Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so motion passed unanimously. Thank you. Next up, human resources director position. Yes, it is my pleasure tonight to recommend uh, Liz English for the position of HR director for our district. Uh, you can read in the, the comments there that this has been a position that's been open for almost a year uh, exactly, and a, a position for which we screened 29 applicants uh, in two separate rounds of, <laughs> of uh, applicant screening. Um, we had a committee of 10 people, including Heather Asher from personnel committee, uh, and then some administrators and our uh, local union representatives, uh, KEA, classified, and um, custodial uh, presidents were also on that committee. Um, it was uh, a great process. Uh, we ended up interviewing five candidates, um, many of them local, and I'm pleased to recommend tonight uh, Liz English, who is with us here in the audience. If Liz wants to wave and say hi. <laughs> Liz is a Flathead High graduate, uh, so coming full circle uh, back to the district, and uh, we're really excited to have her. Questions? Lloyd. On here it says uh, financial implications approximately 111973 Should Before we vote on this, can we have a what the salary will be or how's that? Well, this is all based off of the current salary matrix. And so each year um, in about a month, the board will vote on uh, placements and 
and arrangements of the new salary matrix for administrators. So if there's an increase to the COLA or something else like that, it would affect the. Okay. So I, I don't know what that. Uh, just, I was that's just, why it's just an approximate. At I was point. just looking at that for sake of accuracy. Yeah. Any other questions, comments? Um, during. Sorry. Rebecca, can you just wait? I just um, recognized Lloyd, and then we'll yeah. get to you. Sorry. Uh, I just want to want to say, as as um, trustee representing Lakeside Summers and Kyla, um, I've been out to Kyla School a couple times, and I'm very glad that Liz is hired on as our HR director. She's an awesome person and and a great fit. So I think I'm just happy about that. I want to share that. Thank you, Lloyd. Rebecca. No, I just hadn't seen anything in the description um, describing any HR experience. So I was curious if that had come up in the committee discussion or um, if there was some that we wanted to know about. What was the question? Okay. HR, HR experience. experience specifically. Yes, as uh, the loan administrator in Kyla, <laughs> she is responsible for not only HR, but being the building principal um, and superintendent. Awesome, thank you. Yep. And I will also chime in on this that I've known Liz since, um, <laughs> let's see, uh, Flathead Force Soccer. Um, and um, I'd say when you were this tall, but I think that could be today too. So, <laughs> I mean, right. Yeah, yeah, we're on the same boat there. So um, I was very happy to learn that um, Liz was our applicant. You, Lloyd. <coughs> so, if there are no other questions, <laughs> is there a motion that I would like to second, but I can't make motion? <laughs> I'm going to give this one to Lloyd. <laughs> you can arm wrestle next time. Again, no, he's, okay? he's so, an expert on this. So. Well, thank you. So, Lloyd made the motion. I will second that motion that we hire Liz English. As our HR director, any other deliberations? Seeing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Rebecca, how do you vote? Aye. Thank you. Motion passed unanimously. Welcome, Liz. <clears throat> Uh, next up on the agenda, 2023-24 uh, health insurance renewal. Denise? Oh, Bromley? <laughs> Denise and Bromley. <laughs> Do you guys want me to take this? Sure. Go ahead. <laughs> Not gonna fight over it. <laughs> well, I'm guessing everybody's looked over it. Um, but basically, there's a 10% increase on the on total premium. Um, when you look at it, uh, the information it ends up being a 9.5%. I think in um, what Denise emailed, it said a 9.4. It's it's like a rounding different is really all it is, but overall when you when you add in the dental um, rate, so you've got, um, that's what the increase is, but when you look at um, how we've kind of set it, we've changed the sloping on the tiers, so um, if you look down in that bottom section, you can kind of see where we start out as a one for an employee, 2.1 for employee spouse for employee children and 2.9 for family. And basically what that does is it, it's kind of we're closer to market and how they slope um, based on the tiers. So we've adjusted that. Um, so it does impact, you can kind of see the variance on what that does um, uh, for the employee rate and the employer rate there in that box, what is going to go up. So you'll see um, for the employee, for example, um, the employee only tier is 11.85 increase for the employee spouse 75.68. Um, 
for children 80 through 90, family 87, 37. So that's the impact on the employee, and then you can see the employer right next to it. Um, the reason why it goes down is because the, um, the percentage that we um, were had it at before was not necessarily a 70, 30 split. Um, because what we've said in the past is the employee only tier, we've always tried to keep the employee rate out of the ACA guideline to be considered affordable. And that was around $103 last year. Um, and so it, that's what skews that. It, it, it doesn't end up being a, a true 70 30 split. So last year, you can look, um, it was actually a 76 23 split. Um, 23.4 um, overall when you com combine all and because if you look over you see that 87.4 on the employee only tier and the 12.6 but then all the rest were 70 30 so that's kind of kind of why it was um, skewed a little bit so we we decided this year that we would um, change increase the employee only rate still considered affordable but not uh, nationally, it's, we're, we looked at our lowest um, paid employee, full-time employee, and, and figured out what the affordability would be for them. And so we went, and it actually was around, what was it, 129, yeah. something like that. Um, but we decided to kind of split it and kind of go with 115. So we're still considered affordable um, based on what we, um, what you know, salaries are here. And then, um, as you can see, what that does is we didn't change it much. It went down, but we're kind of trying to close that gap so we can get closer to that 70-30, and hopefully we get there um, eventually one day. So it ends up being a, this year, you can't see it because you didn't put it in the, in the um, spreadsheet, but it ends up being about a 74-26 split overall. And then if you go to the next, slide, what it does is what it's showing here is what that impact is on the increase. So um, this is what, you know, with the 10% or the 9.4 is what it's showing here. Um, it's 60% for the employer for the district and 40% um, overall um, for the employee. So that's just on the increase. Does anybody have any questions? Anybody confused? <laughs> <laughs> I know. I was probably spinning for a lot of people, but overall, 10% increase um, to the total premium. And, um, you know, it does impact some of those other tiers, but um, when we look at market and other AA's, we're still right in there. One of the dilemmas that it one of the dilemmas that exists with our population is a lot of high claims, and we don't have, and we don't know what all the, the reason for the high claims, but a lot of high drug claims in particular. So it's not so much uh, hospital visits as much as it is really high drug claims, and and that's what's, and you never know that from year to year, and in some cases these. Drug claims can run $500,000, and what happens is they use the term laser, which means instead of having $125,000 uh, stop loss, it may be increased to $300,000, or it may be increased to a little bit. So it increases our exposure, but it also covers the upper end. So, uh, and those are the unknowns that we have no control over. What happens to people? at different stages in their life because it's not age related and it just happens. And so that's, even though we may have 582 people on the plan, it still exposes everybody to the increased costs. That's a good point. So I didn't mention why we're having the increase. So again, it is based on claims, but it's also um, actually half is claims. And then the other half is we're implementing a new two new programs at our clinic. Um, so one of the biggest concerns that we hear from the committee is um, 
you know, we don't offer uh, counseling services necessarily for our staff. I mean, there's a good benefit within the built in within the plan, but um, we don't have any EAP programs uh, necessarily. So, um, PREMS offers a program where they, um, if you offer virtual primary care, um, then you can add on primary virtual uh, behavior health. And so um, when we looked at the cost of it, it ended up being 27500 for each of those programs. But when you combine them, we, we decided that it was a lot cheaper um, to go that route instead of bringing in like a full-time counselor into the clinic um, because it benefits us in you know, a couple of different ways. It's benefiting us because they can have virtual primary care um, virtually, I think, 24-7. And so our clinic is only open part-time, you know, half the time. So they can go Friday, Saturday, Sunday and, and get the care that they might need as opposed to running to the ER and things like that, which would save the plan a ton of money. So that was the benefit. And then also the, the one that we really wanted to add was the behavioral health. And so um, they have access to 50 plus counselors um, at any time to um, contact and, and get in touch. And then it's also connected back to our primary care um, provider. So um, he will then you know, follow up with, with the uh, member to see if there's anything, if they, if, he, if they would like to come in for a follow-up visit or whatever, um, based on whatever they were being seen for. So it really connects and, and bridges the gap that you find sometimes with maybe behavioral health and primary care. Now, uh, Bromley used the phrase slope. Bromley used the phrase slope in part of the conversation. Do people understand what slope means? Please explain. Please, Jeff. <laughs> uh, the best example would be when you have an employee, you have one person. When you have an employee and a spouse, you have two people. So you have one slope, one person impact, and you have a two-person impact. When you have a, an employee and family, the children typically are not in, do not impact health insurance as much as the adults do. So then when you go to the entire family plan, you have two adults and you have one or multiple children, and that's where you get up to the 2.9, meaning that there's at least two, two adults and then a large family that may have some higher expenses. So the slope is something you can always manipulate to make premiums affordable to the different groups in order to cover the the historical aspect of cost that might exist. So even though you may start out with a premium, the reason why there may not look like there's uniformity between the different groups that exist, the employee, the employee spouse, the employee children, or the family, is because you look at what historically you've been having, and then you look and see, uh, you, you look at how to spread it across and make it affordable. So the slope is how to relate it from one person to two people to uh, a family and and or a family and depend or uh, employee and dependents. So the slope is just a, another one of the tools to uh, try and have the premiums be fair across all groups. Thanks, Jeff. Lloyd? I have a quick question. Can you go back to the last slide? Thank you. Um, I'm just curious why, you know, in the medical, is, if I understand that right, it's just employee plus children without a spouse, the second one up from the bottom on the far left. Mm -hmm. So why would it be more for, uh, in medical, it's more for family than it is for employee and child, but why is in, in dental, why is that switched around? Why is that more for, oh, never mind. I missed, I skipped the line there. Sorry. Good. Yeah, I skipped the line in it anyways. You can see the slope. Um, actually, it's kind of covered right there. Slide up the slope here. The, the employee spouse is 2.1, and then the employee child is 2. Um, you can have as many children on the plan as you want. 
but typically spouses cost more than even multiple children. My spouse. head's just got mixed up on the lines. No Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, and then Ursula. Diane first. Okay. Um, 9.5% is a lot, but I was trying to remember in past years kind of what the increase was, and I remember that after this, and I'm sorry that I wasn't at this last meeting, but um, last year it seemed like Scott Foss had said we should prepare for like 13% increase. Um, do you remember, like in years past, kind of well, what it had been going for years? Because ten, like it Not sounds true. terrible, Five. but it's actually not as bad as I was expecting. Kind what, of. What was it last year? La last year was like five. Well, it was a decrease to the employee, mm -hmm. so because of us going to a 70-30 split okay. across each tier, um, so the, there was, the rates actually went down for the employee. The district picked up. 5%. So whatever it ended up being, the district um, took on more of that. So yeah, last year, to the, the impact to the employees was nothing. They had a decrease, actually. Um, so, you know, hopefully then, you know, really maybe I'll make, make sure I point that out a little bit in, in an email that goes out so it's not so, just so they remember because it's important to, to understand that. But um, yeah, I, as far as you know, where we're at, we're still in line with other AA, um, actually. Yeah. Pretty well I, would, I would add to that that, that the, um, the increase to the overall plan last year from the year prior total premium, if we're saying $8 million, it was 5% mm -hmm. uh, increase. This year it's 10%, but we're also seeing um, other districts with 29% increases and 10% increases. It had and, been more, mm -hmm. yeah. right? The years before that, it had been. Mm -hmm. It, it, we held pretty flat. Um, pretty flat for a while. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and we've got some margin in there. Um, you know, we don't set stop loss rates until you know middle of May. Typically, there's a 15% margin there. Hope we're hoping at five. Um, and that's you know, you know, we could look at bringing that down, but then there we take on that risk. You know that we're going to go into the hole. So there, there's just you know you might as well do it now than versus later kind of thing. You know later at, at the end. So hopefully we can still try to build up that reserve. Yeah. Well, and 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 like as bad as it is, I I was thinking because I remember last year wasn't so bad. It wasn't so bad. Like the warning we get in the meetings is that it could be so much worse. Yeah. So. I just want to say thank you to Bromley for, uh, and the uh, health insurance um, uh, committee for taking so much time putting this all together because I know that um, we want to keep the rates just as low as possible, but we want to keep this, this plan self-sustaining. So yeah. thanks for all you do. And yeah, 9% is a lot, but um, it could be a lot as you said, there are some AA districts that are in much worse position than we are. Yeah. You know, I also like to see that we are adding some things, the virtual mm -hmm. primary care and the virtual behavioral health. <clears throat> behavioral health. I think that's really important that we add those too. So we have some increase, but some other <laughs> nice benefits in there. So thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Jennifer and then Jack. Um, the bill that you talked about, I think, 332 for the health insurance, will that impact this or next year, if it impacts at all? <laughs> it, it, it'll be a few years. Um, yeah. if, it, if it passes out of um, the Senate, um, it, it gives, basically, it's a bill that creates a health insurance trust for districts that want to participate. It has some really tight parameters on it. You have to have 12,000 employee lives. Uh, you have to have at least 150 districts. Um, currently in Montana, there are 17 self-funded insurance plans, most of which are double A's, that have reserves in excess of what the state is actually proposing to put for, towards reserves. Um, but it, there would be an ongoing process for someone uh, to pick up the, the ball and, and run with it, um, so to speak, when it comes to that trust. The idea, though, is that if you have 12,000 employee lives contributing to a health insurance fund, as opposed to 
549 lives, you are potentially looking at um, cost savings, cost decreases, the ability to leverage your um, healthcare needs against, uh, say, what a hospital is put, proposing for rates, different things like that. So we see there's a, a benefit to it. Um, it's just going to take a lot of heavy lifting by someone like Denise or one of her colleagues. <laughs> no, everybody's like, I do not want to touch that. Um, uh, but yeah, it, it could be a good thing. We've, we've certainly been a proponent of it. Uh, Jack. It theoretically can be a good thing. I'm not sure that's going to help the entities that are self-insured. It's going to help those that are have regular health insurance policies. The and to obtain twelve thousand would be very difficult because you're talking about a lot of the B schools and C schools that would need to participate and to find twelve thousand participants. Uh, what are there, 400 schools in Montana? You'd have to make 450 of them at least cooperate. That by itself would be interesting. No, you only need 150 to cooperate. Um, and the majority of those that are, like, say, currently in must uh, mm -hmm. are, are smaller schools. They actually need the AA districts to join to hit the 12,000. But the 150, 150 wouldn't provide 12,000. But the AA's it would. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah, they, but they've run the numbers on, you know, what they think it would take. It, it'll take the AA districts to, you're not going to get the 12,000 without the AA's. It, well, yeah, and, and the AA's are doing well without the program, so that's a difficulty. And uh, next year, we will be going out for bid for our health insurance. But last time we did it was six years ago, and at that time, the premiums were two to $300 more than what our self-insured premiums were, and that's also an indicator of where it is right now if you go on the regular market. So we're still better off being self-insured. But yes, if you can get a 12,000 group pool, just like the state employees are about 12,000 strong, and that's why they have five, four clinics scattered throughout the state in order to uh, address, to provide health insurance for the, the state employees. Uh, so no, to me, we still have something good going. Whether this works or not, we'll just have to take a good, hard financial look at it, not a feel-good look at it, to, to see that if it would be worth going. But uh, even getting a 10% increase, it's no fun having that, but it's still a better option to go. Thanks, Jack. Any other questions? Anybody comfortable making a motion? Move. Thank you, Lloyd. Is there a second? I'll second it. Thank you, Ursula. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any public comment? Seeing none, all in favor, <coughs> please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Rebecca, how do you vote? Aye. Thank you, motion passed unanimously. Thank you. Next up, the consent agenda for elementary only. Hope everybody had a chance to take a look at this. Do I move to pass the, pass the consent agenda as presented? Thank you, Lance. I'll second that. Thank you, Ursula. It has been moved and seconded. Is there any public comment? Seeing none, elementary trustees only. In favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Rebecca? Aye. Thank you. Motion passed unanimously. Next up, district wide consent agenda. Any questions? Well, does anybody know uh, we have one person going to National Auto uh, Program? Does anybody know what you have to do to become a National Honor Auto Husband? Do you know somebody? 
Oh yeah, but I believe that was through Skills USA and won the state competition. Uh, but they were going to go to Atlanta. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Skills USA, uh, national organization, um, you have uh, local or state competition in a variety of things like welding or automotive or, or a lot of the career and technical education skills. And then if you uh, win state, then you qualify to go to nationals. Okay. Yep. And do we usually have kids compete in those competitions or is this? Yeah, in, in Skills USA, yeah. Um, being the state champ for, for Montana, is a, it's pretty competitive, uh, mm -hmm. similar to like DECA or, mm -hmm. or some of our other uh, programs. And so a uh, pretty big honor to win that and, and have an opportunity to go on and compete nationally. Uh, going through the warrants, um, the 041423, um, I'm curious, uh, we have our coaches and stuff at schools. I'm wondering what Henry Shine Inc. is, or you know, when we're paying for athletic training, when we have trainers at school. What's just curious what that's all about? If anybody knows? I I don't offhand. Denise might be able to pull it up out of the expenditures, but it's coded. Um, 284. Oh, just a little bit, Denise. It's 284, 107. Right there, athletic training. That's high school. Okay, but what is Henry Shine Inc.? And that might just be training supplies like tape and pre wrap. And... But he's a coach at the school, isn't he? Henry Shine is? Yeah. So he doesn't, is paying two. Their company. I'm just curious what, when we have athletic, it says it's for athletic training. It doesn't say for supplies. Okay. And if we have coaches and we have athletic directors and whatnot, what are we paying for? Athletic is, training? That's going to be an Angela question. That's Angela question. Yeah, that'd be an Angela question. Yeah. Okay. Henry Shine is Yeah. It's a supply coach. Supply coach. It's a supply coach. It's not a service. Oh, it isn't. Yeah, okay, so it said athletic training, which is why I was. Yeah, I think that's in a broad category, but the 610 is the supply code Okay. Yeah. Uh, at gotcha. the end of that. That makes sense. And so, if I, I were to look that up, it probably says athletic training supplies. Okay. It just says that like all the information. That's all the information I had, so that's what I was going off of. <laughs> Thank you. And I, I would say, though, if you saw something like that, and um, you're correct that we do have athletic trainers, um, through Logan Health, and um, but sometimes we need additional coverage when we have multiple events going on, like say you have tennis going on okay. and, and track going on and softball going on. We may need additional coverage to uh, support our student athletes. So, Makes sense. Yeah, that was different. You could see that. I, I don't know if I've seen it in yeah. time recently, but we've, I've seen it in the past. Thank you. Any other questions? Anyone comfortable making a motion? This is one. Thank you, Jack. Thank you, Will. It's been moved and seconded. Any public comment? I know you don't answer questions, but um, the very bottom of this report, uh, there's two items on here that say baby shower. And not very much money, 125 36 and 39 but it just looks kind of weird on here. Uh, Thank you, Sean. Um, it's been moved and seconded that we approve the consent agenda district-wide. All in favor, please aye. say aye. 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 Any aye. opposed? Aye. Rebecca? Aye. It has aye. been approved unanimously. Thank you. Next up. <laughs> there could be one under the 
trustee reports. Heather. All I have is we have one more week of going around and spreading the news. That's rising up too. Doesn't do report. Nothing. Nothing. So I was trying to figure this out, but I think this could be the last meeting that I get to if I don't pass the one more. Nope. Yeah. Two more. But oh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> You're never done with us, Will. You get unless you're me. Diana's trying to do the same thing earlier. Yeah. <laughs> like, this is my last one. Uh -uh. <laughs> um, in our curriculum committee meeting, we talked about the process of reviewing curriculum materials. And we are going to be looking at some materials that are IB materials. Um, there is a scheduled time that everybody can look through those materials for the trustees and the public. And can you remind me what week that is, Pete? <coughs> uh, it would be, <laughs> yeah, thanks. It's like two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> it's a three-week public display, so it would be after the, our next meeting. So up to the last three weeks of May. Is what we're okay, that's what I was thinking, thinking. Was around the last three weeks okay. of May. So if anybody wants to look through some books, um, I'm trying to remember, it'll be a biology, physics, and uh, Math. Yeah, biology, physics, and math. So we are looking at reviewing those and just making sure that we are keeping on that process of looking through it, getting it checked, making sure that it meets the standards. Um, so that's where we're at with curriculum. I had the pleasure of attending the International Languages Awards ceremony yesterday, and uh, just wanted to say that that we have a, a bunch of really brilliant kids who are learning multiple languages, and even one of them took three Apple tests and was able to qualify uh, as um, literate in three languages, which is really cool. Um, but I just wanted to point out that, uh, it, or give those kids that acknowledgement that, that it's a pretty big accomplishment to be, not just uh, to speak another language, but to be literate, read, write, and speak. So it's was pretty cool, it was a neat ceremony. I just wanted to mention that um, I have the honor of proctoring an IB exam, and it's good timing. Um, Rebecca, you'll be proud of me, too, because I'm proctoring the math section of it. Um, and it's, it's, it's kind of a, a neat experience, those standardized tests like that, and just to see how the kids are so dedicated and work on them is really something. So I'm glad I get to do that. Uh, Rebecca, do you have anything? Just thank you, Sue, for proctoring yeah. the math exam since I wasn't able to. And um, good luck. You have to look at every calculator and see if it fits within the rules, which looked like a huge job to me. So enjoy. <laughs> Thanks for that warning. <laughs> okay. Um, administrator reports. Denise? Um, well, the election is up and running. Um, I think the last time I talked to you, we were a little concerned about uh, ballots not being uh, there for us to assemble the packets that we um, rallied. We had a lot of help, um, a lot of great help on Saturday. Uh, we had administrators there. We had uh, a few office managers, as well, along with our regular, you know, election workers that. Um, that work every year for us. So we were able to mail the ballots out on time on April 17th. Um, we've got folks uh, dropping them off at the new ballot drop-off place. We've had a few people wander over to the central admin building, but um, in general, most people are finding their way over to um, the new transfer, or not the new transportation building, but the transportation building and the new drop-off site. Um, I've had several comments from folks saying that it's a lot easier to park, a lot easier to get in stores. Um, 
So, so far so good. I've been still seeing a lot of phone calls and emails from folks just having various questions. Um, a lot of things are on the instructions that come with the packet, but not everybody reads that. <laughs> um, and I've had a lot of uh, really endearing conversations, especially with our elderly community. Um, it's been nice. Uh, so we're on track to, uh, we're doing some, um, the, the county does a demonstration of the express boats machine and then uh, and also a testing of the uh, tabulators and that will take place tomorrow at the county election office. It's uh, open to the public, um, but we'll be there and our election judges will be there to uh, uh, use, you know, look at the express votes machine and use it. Then we'll have it on site. Um, it just hasn't been provided to us by the county. In the meantime, um, should we have a person who needs extra help with voting, there are other ways of assisting them, like curbside voting and, and some other methods that have been in place before these express votes machines were ever even um, think. So, uh, so yeah, we're just gearing up and getting ready for next Tuesday. And I'm hoping because we're using the county ballot tabulators that it will, will be a uh, much faster process. Um, so first time we've used them, but it's nice to be um, collaborating with the county on the election duties and the le election process. And I'm hoping that moves us more toward, you know, we might have to, you know, work with them over the years. Um, but my, my hope and dream is that they will agree to conduct the election for us someday. But we'll, we'll get there. Thanks, Denise. Pete? Right there. Uh, just a couple of things. Uh, one, uh, Special Olympics this Friday, Legend Stadium. If anybody is interested in coming to cheer on our Special Olympic athletes, I uh, would love to see you there. Mm -hmm. Always a great time. Um, continuing to do community presentations and spreading the word about the upcoming levy election. Um, and we'll continue that. Uh, and then we just continue to work on a long-range facility planning process. We have another meeting uh, coming up next week. And we're just continuing to move forward with that, hoping to get more information from our consultants about the condition of our facilities and, and different things like that. They will be um, uh, coming to do a presentation May 9th, um, give a little more information on the demographic report and some of the information that they're finding. Uh, the idea being that they will inform the board first, and then they'll start having um, uh, discussions around community presentations on the information that they've collected as well. Thanks, Micah. What time is the special Olympics? Oh, there we go. <laughs> um, I have it on my calendar starting at 9. And <coughs> oh, all day. So it was all day. All day. Yep. Okay. And hopefully we have amazing weather. It's supposed to be 70. <laughs> I know. Yeah. For once, it would be nice. Oh, yeah. It always rains the hard drive. Yeah. Um, next up on the agenda is public comment. Do you want me to read the whole thing, Sean, or? <laughs> Thanks for keeping my 29 seconds. Um, so I uh, wasn't able to make a public comment. Was not called for tonight on the hiring action. I thought that Sunday she's going to do great. So all I want to say about that, though, is when the superintendent hiring process was going on, um, it was a big concern that the, that the super, new superintendent Candidate does not have double A experience. Um, and, uh, but Liz does, uh, you know, she's coming from a much smaller district, uh, so it's not a concern here. Um, it seems like it should probably not be a really big concern for the um, two new superintendent coming in because, uh, you know, it's a consideration, but not like a, a deal killer because. Uh, I do believe that Mr. Plateau had no double experience before he came here. I could be mistaken about that, but people, if you ask them. Um, and that's all I had to say. Thank you, Sean. 
Next up, upcoming meeting. Oh, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, Liz. Oh, oh, yeah, we got the clock. <laughs> You're on the clock, Lynn. Hold on, I'll use the rest of Sean's time. <laughs> I would like to go 29 seconds. <laughs> um, I was honored to get this clock. In fact, it's very... <laughs> um, and, um, I'm moving to the microphone. Um, so I am gifting this clock to Sherry who jumped in to um, the administrative assistant role with two feet and is now organizing um, with me and Chris Hirsch a retirement party that is always um, big and near and dear to my heart, honoring teachers who have spent um, a number of years and their, many of them their entire career in um, our Flathead School District, educating our youth, and I just appreciate how organized and how um, easy you are to work with. She's done some things that I do most years, and it's taken a load off my plate. So thank you. Thank you, Lynn. Thank you, Sherry. I wanted to remind trustees um, that we have another meeting next week to look at candidates for interim superintendent. And we do have some new applications to look at. Um, we will be meeting at six o'clock in this room. And um, it, we will uh, conduct that meeting just like we did the last time. There will be a portion of it which is in closed session um, just because of privacy uh, reasons. And then we will have the discussion in open session. So, um, Jack. Will there be packets for us to pick up and look at? Yes. And I'm going to go out on a limb and say they'll be here Friday, but we'll it could see. be Monday. <laughs> could be Monday. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just, yeah. I know. I'll help. I'll wreck you. Yeah. Um, and then there is the list of upcoming meetings. Um, please take a look at those. I know we have been um, pretty busy lately, and thank you all. Um, for attending those committees and um, these important meetings right now. We've got a lot going on. Um, I, for one, will be glad when um, next week is over with, um, just because there's a lot of things happening. So um, I have to send my husband away for the week just so I could get some things done. <laughs> um, but um, thank you for all being here tonight. Um, and is there a motion to adjourn? The move. Thank you, Lance. Is there a second? I'll second it. Thank you, Ursula. Moved and seconded. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Rebecca? Aye. Motion or meeting adjourned. Um, the